I lead our work on public engagement, which is the, the title of, of this presentation. And, and we at Edelman see public engagement as the evolution uh, of public relations. Um, for those of you that uh, are tweeting this, my Twitter handle is uh, Citizen Robert, uh, and that will give you uh, some clue as to some of my personal passions about citizenship and society. Uh, and these are intimately linked in terms of a lot of the trends that we're going to be looking at today as we talk about the evolution of public relations to, to public engagement and the role of the corporation in helping actually sh shape a better society. But I think that in the Eurozone, this issue of trust and corporate reputation is at its most acute. And one of the things that's been really on my mind is that we obviously have a political crisis in Europe and we have an economic crisis in Europe. That does not necessarily mean that we have uh, a business crisis in Europe or a communications crisis in Europe. So we have a very tense world. And I think that what we try and look at in terms of this age of engagement is how from these polarities, these extremes of, of difference, we can find uh, from, the, uh, from the thesis and the antithesis, some sort of synthesis that, that helps us build a, a, better, a better world. I see the age of engagement as having these two poles, and I talked about tensions and polarity in my opening comments, but I think that for communications professionals, and certainly for public relations and public affairs professionals today, to really understand the world, we need to understand deep science, but we also have to understand deep humanity. And I think it's only when we can claim to understand both that we can really do our jobs as communications professionals. So the world is increasingly networked, and in order to understand networks, we do actually have to understand science. Specifically, we have to understand algorithms and how algorithms determine the shape of networks and the flow of information between networks. It doesn't mean that we have to be scientists. Okay? It just means that we have to understand the theory behind it. So we have to understand algorithms. We have to understand networks. And most importantly of all, we have to understand two things. One is search and the other is data. Um, we have to understand search because 91% of all our news online starts with a search engine. If you don't understand how search works and the semantic web, then you're not going to be able to understand how to disseminate information, how to capture information, how to share information. So we have to have a basic understanding of the science of networks. We have to understand analytics. As we'll come on to look at, we no longer live in a broadcast age. We don't need to talk about audiences. Audiences are very sort of all-encompassing and non-specific, we have to be able to talk about communities, and those communities have to be based on, on shared interests. We therefore have to understand the data and the analytics that allow us to talk to those communities specifically. However, in understanding all this deep science, it actually counts for nothing if we don't understand humanity. Because networks only work not if they're connected by maths, but if they're connected with real people. All we've tried to do is to take the world as we see it and the world as it's changing and to put a new framework around it. Why is trust important to all of this? Well, this is a, a chart that I think says it all very nicely. When a company is distrusted, you will find that negative information flows four times faster than when a company is trusted. So there is a direct correlation, there is a direct relationship between trust and corporate reputation. The expectations of our informed publics and indeed our general publics have changed. So on the left-hand chart, you can see 10 years ago, people said, well, well, if you ask, well, what has built trust in the past? Absolutely about what we would call shareholder value or shareholder return, delivering consistent financial returns from a company. The operational excellence of a company was always up there alongside you know, coming up with great new products, delivering great services. And, and, and that was the key attribute that built trust in the past. Project forward to the future and ask the same question and say, well, what will build trust in the future? And it is no longer consistent financial returns. It's no longer the operational imperatives as shown in blue here. It's the societal factors, listening to customer needs, treating employees well, placing customers ahead of profits, taking actions to address societal issues or dealing with crises, has ethical business practices. These are now in the top sort of percentage of what people are looking for to build trust in the future. Companies really have to focus in on their primary advocates, which are their employees. And historically, companies have looked at NGOs, the third parties, to fill the conscience deficit, to make sure they were seen to be doing the right thing by having the right partnerships, by being public in their support of an NGO. 
Now, actually, that trust can be built from within with regular employees and regular people. Sitting in the heart of it, going back to what I said right at the beginning of my, my, my talk, is two things, search and content. So again, it goes back to understanding the science of all of this. You have to understand search, and you have to understand uh, analytics to understand how the, the information flows through and across na networks and the communities that you're trying to reach. And of course, none of this, none of this makes any sense whatsoever if we don't have the content to which we uh, can apply. And, and for me, content needs to be uh, original, it needs to be likable, it needs to be shareable, and it needs to be atomic. But it's not about audiences any longer. It goes back to my point about the network age. It's about communities. The second is how the new reality has moved us from being consumers to co-creators. And when it comes to brands, we're not looking at individuals as consumers, but as co-creators. Brands have gone from push to pull. As business organizations tend to uh, imagine themselves in vertical silos. It's the only way that they know how to create themselves. Regular people build networks. They connect with one another. And increasingly, millennial people coming into the workplace don't see hierarchy. They only see networks because they hang out with their friends on Facebook. So what you have is uh, a vertical structure, but a horizontal movement. Now, I think this is going to lead to huge organizational change, and huge challenges for, for companies. And what I say to my teams advising at senior levels within Edelman to, to major multinational clients is, don't go in and advise on communications campaigns unless you've got someone who's an expert in organizational design alongside you. Because actually, inside-out marketing is, is what is going to happen. Because it's better to use those networks, to harness the power of those networks, and not try to silo them into silos that are effectively redundant. So the markets have gone from selling products to creating platforms. They're no longer selling just engines or power or just um, computers or computing. They're selling ideas. Now, the final shift is about leadership. So we had to move from control frequency to empowerment. Social business is about how this democratization that we've talked about, how these networks of influence, how the rise of regular employees and regular people, how the erosion of trust in institution and authority is changing the shape of uh, everything from the workplace to politics to, to government. Uh, social business is about the spread of networks and the influence, the changing shape of influence, the dispersion of authority uh, across those networks. It is not about whether somebody uses Facebook. Governments are being better informed by citizen consumers. Citizen consumers are being better informed by employees. And within the employee base, there'll be advocates or advocates who really push uh, a certain agenda. So business leaders have to be aware of the, the sort of forceful pressures they're building within their organization. It's about creating shared communities of shared interests, about shared values, and about connecting people on that basis. But ultimately, communications today needs to be open, honest, and frequent. So in an engaged world, because it goes back to my point, it's not just about the humanity, it's also about the science. We have to be able to analyze what we do and what we deliver. And I believe those measurements boil down to four things which is building deeper communities, because communities have replaced audiences, about increasing trust, because trust is central to corporate reputation, about behavioral change, because it was always what we set out to do, whether it's to buy more, more of a product, less of a product, or uh, to wash more often, or whatever it happens to be, or ultimately to drive commercial success, whether it's uh, represented through uh, profit, uh, or whether it's represented through sales. So I've tried to codify here the seven behaviors that I think we need to follow. First of all, and again, this is really a summary of the points I've made so far, we have to understand that everyone can be an activist now. Secondly, we have to stop listening only to elites. We listen, need to listen to regular people. We need to harness the wisdom of the crowd. So this is about the democratization of information, but also about the democratization of listening. Third, it's no longer good enough to push messages out. The conversation is taking place all the time and in real time. And for brands and companies to be actively engaged, they have to participate with honesty, with openness, with transparency in the always-on conversation. We have to build narratives that navigate this media clover. We have to practice genuine transparency. And we have to recognize that good business needs three things now. Profit, purpose, and engagement.
So it goes back to what I said before. Profit is no longer enough on its own. That's not to say that profit is not important because people still recognize that companies need to make money to do good. However, if that shareholder value is disaggregated or disassociated from societal value, it doesn't work. I genuinely believe, not just because it's a, a personal passion point, but because uh, I think it's an axiomatic truth that citizens will rise, will continue to rise. And there is this new era of accountability to regular people that will come about as this sort of um, dispersion of authority away from traditional power structures continues. I think that brands will kill off push and will create their own brand orbits. And I think that brands will continue to build gravity around themselves to create uh, their own universes, if you like, their own communities, which people want. My belief is that public engagement um, is that framework. And public engagement, if properly practiced, as I say, with those five principles of um, bottom-up, social, transparent, values-led and rooted in action, will enable people to move from the license to operate to uh, the license to lead.